Nigerians, what Nigerian workers join counterparts to mark International Workers' Day to commemorate achievements of the labor force. Plus, we focus on rising cost of living and coping as a Nigerian worker. This and more on Panorama today. I am Obehi Otubwa Prasai. Welcome. <laughs> Improved welfare and better remuneration are on the front burner as workers in Edo State join their counterparts globally to mark this year's Workers' Day, commemorated every May 1st. Jude Abugu has a situation report from Samuel Obimudia Stadium, venue of the Workers' Day celebration in Edo State. Jude? Workers in Edo State are in high spirit to mark this special day set aside to celebrate workers and recognize their contributions towards the growth of organizations, nations, and industries across the globe. To show you how important this day is to workers in Edo State, I must tell you that they started arriving somewhere at Obamudia Stadium, the venue of this event, as early as 8 in the morning. We captured their moods as they arrived the venue. A lot of things, or certain things, that is happening, death here and there, killings. So I am glad that I am alive today to witness today, May 1st, 2022. And we are happy that we are identifying with labor today because we have actually gained a lot from the organized labor. And we believe that uh, the, yet is, the best is yet to come. We are here to join other workers in Nigeria to celebrate uh, Labor Day. Series of activities have been lined up to commemorate this important day. This includes a lecture entitled Labor, Politics and Quest for Good Governance and Development in Nigeria. This is the situation from uh, Samuel Obemdia Stadium as we await the arrival of the state governor and other government officials for the event to commence in earnest. Back to you in the studio. The economy has experienced various upheaval in recent times, which has in turn led to harsh realities for the Nigerian residents. The Nigerian worker is forced to navigate the times with little or no increase in salary and the informed sector bearing the brunt of customers' low buying power. And will Okolo ascertain people's coping mechanisms in the present condition? From the diesel fuel hike and scarcity to the decline of the naira against the dollar and the consequential rise in prices of goods and services, the plight facing the Nigerian worker is huge and challenging. Uh, compared to before, you can enter moto from here to Ikbo by 100 naira, but now it's about 300 naira to Ikbo. Uh, when I go to market with the money I have, I don't know what to buy. Even though I used to list most of the things, no, 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 the system I have not used. No, no job at all. Because if there's a job, people will try to work, they'll get money to eat. Even though it's not his cost, we will need to buy it. The Nigerian worker is compelled to navigate these unending problems with fixed salaries which have not changed for a long while and therefore remain inappropriate against current harsh economic realities. The worker salary should be increased to ensure that the masses are emancipated economically. It is their responsibility to do that. It's a wake-up call to everybody to begin to look for multiple streams of income. Okay, it's not enough. Uh, gone are the days where we rely on uh, a single source of income. How are people coping with this harsh climate? I was at Ring Road, the city center, to interview a cross-section of Nigerians on how they cope with the economic realities, as it were. The economic situation of this in this country, you need to manage. You sew your coat according to your material. Uh, are they do other things today? Are they do research to help myself? So if they can increase the salary or to balance the economy of Nigeria so that we, we common man can be able to purchase anything in the market. 
In one voice, they encourage fellow Nigerians to be patient and explore ways to diversify their income and called on governments to put regulations in place to help monitor incessant increases in prices of goods and services. In Benin, Aulio Okolo, NTA News. To discuss more on how the Nigerian worker can cope with this new economic regime, we have here in the studios of Panorama, our guest, Professor Julius Iasele, a university lecturer and public analyst. Um, happy new month to you, Prof, and welcome to Panorama. Thank you. It's May Day. And so how should um, the public workforce deal with the emerging challenges in the Nigerian economy? Yeah, the little clip we just heard now talked about multiple streams of income. It is time for Nigerian workers to understand the importance of multitasking. You have to be able to do uh, so many things at the same time. Why still operating optimally? Uh, I want to, as a Christian, there's a verse in the Bible, Genesis 1.10, that said that the water or the river that made the Garden of Eden to flourish had to be divided into four. What that means is that you are supposed to have a, when you have a job, that is option A. You are supposed to have option B, C, and D before you can be comfortably, uh, you can, it can be said to be comfortable. That is what it is. So what I mean here is multitasking is the in thing now. You have to have multiple, multiple streams, streams of, of income. income. And there are so many things that you, you can do at the same time. If you, if for instance, you work in MTA now, for you, you have an advertising agency, for instance, and then have different persons who are voicing and all that. There are many businesses you can add which are additive to, you know, the job on MTA. For instance, I, I, as, a, as a lecturer, I am a, a, a chemist by profession. I, I do manufacturing myself. I have products. On the chef, I consult for people who do analysis and all that. So I have up to about four also strings that I'm using. If A is not working like we are home now, then I have to immediately revert back to, to the B option, C, and then, and then D. And it appears to be working out because you can see right now, salary, there's no time salary is going to give any man comfort because the first day you take up an employment, between you and your employer, you, are, you have different goals. There's already confusion. Have you heard how do I put it now? Because what happens is that the employer wants to maximize profits and then you want, your, you, you, you want a wage that is commensurate with the work that you, you put in. Whereas the employer is wanting to maximize income. If you look at that, there's already conflict, isn't it? Because you want to be paid but the employer wants to make more profits. So you, there's no time he's going to pay you. And like I said before even coming here, I told somebody that you cannot be better than your employer. If you are somebody who wants to be, you want to be rich thereabout, you can't be richer than your employer. And what that means is that you have to work for yourself. I guess the That's modern trend thing. for that is in side hustle. Yeah, yeah that is what, what the word for it. You, have, you must hustle on the side. There's nothing stopping you, stopping the lady who works here from, you know, doing braiding, you are manufacturing one bag or something and all that. There are so many things, as it were, that we can do at the same time, and even if so, you're not there. So, Prof, how can um, the workforce be made to understand that areas like education, health and agriculture must be made a priority by government? Oh, how can they be? How, how, can, how can we know if we are not told? So what that means that uh, we have NOA. What that means that agencies of government like that have to be uh, on their on their tools, working, bringing information across to people, telling people the, the truth. Really, that is what it, it is. There's no way that uh, we know without being told. So. Yeah, and it is very succinct. It is very, 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 very clear. Yes. So quickly now, what's your message to the Nigerian worker as they mark their day today? I, I wish I wish them well, but to know that uh, from time immemorial, when somebody sang the song uh, "Solidarity," 
uh, he met where if you look, look listen to the where the lyrics of that uh, of that song you understand clearly the position of every every em employee so my message to them is that i wish them uh, workers day happy may day and that they should return back and think of multiple streams uh, they should develop the spirit of multitasking so that they will be comfortable thank you very much we've had um guests on Panorama, Professor Julius Iasele, the University Lecturer and Public Analyst. Um, don't forget that you can follow this news live on our website at ntang slash live and on YouTube at NTA News Online. You can also visit our Facebook page at NTA Network News. Our Twitter handle is at NTA News Now and on Instagram at NTA Network for updates. Let's take a break. Or it's the vaccine offers hope for a safe country free of coronavirus. I urge all state governments, traditional and religious leaders, to take the lead in the mobilization effort within their environment and spheres of influence. I similarly urge all eligible Nigerians to present themselves and be vaccinated in accordance with the order of priority already mapped out at the various authorized designated centers only. leadership style of the Director General of the NTA, Malam Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, has again been recognized. The Role Model Leadership Award did the honors, this time at the formal launch of Young Entrepreneurs and Innovators Foundation in Abuja. Ngozi Technicu reports. With the theme, Youth Entrepreneurship, Panacea for Security and Political Challenges in Nigeria, Organizers of the event appreciated the contribution of the NTA under the leadership of the present Director General, Yakubo Ibn Mohammed, in the promotion of positive aspirations of Nigerian youths. Now in that club, each and every public and private schools will be captured, where the youths will now be engaged. Represented by the director of multi channels, Yohen Kwangi, the DG and other awardees applaud Yi Foundation for the honor done them. We need a YouTube proof that they can do it by showing entrepreneurship, showing skills, being innovative so that they can take charge and move this country to the next level. The panacea to sustainable youth engagement and youth development in this country is for the youth to look in the direction of relevant skill acquisition. I would tell our Nigeria youth today is they should not look at what is happening now, what is in for them now. They should look at the future. The passion to create wealth through the reorientation of youths to become great thinkers for repositioning the country, give birth to the Young Entrepreneurs and Innovators Foundation. In Abuja, Ngozi Serva, Technical, NT News. An interagency collaboration between Universal Basic Education Commission, UNICEF, and other stakeholders is exploring how best to overcome challenges that beset female students as they transit from primary to post-primary schools. Amin Umar reports. 15-year-old Sepia Bello, a JSS2 student, is a water vendor who sells sashi water in the village. Her story is not different from that of Hasana, who does henna designs and plait hair to raise money to pay for her school fees. While declaring the meeting open, Executive Director Universal Basic Education Commission Hamid Boboy said the consultative meeting with relevant stakeholders is critical 
in view of the immense challenges it seeks to address. We said, okay, let's also listen to the guards exactly what are the challenges that these guards are facing. Uh, of course, inside the problems are well known. Yeah, and junior secondary schools are still not enough to cater for the population, school age going population that we have in the country. The girls were drawn from various public secondary schools in Sokoto, Zamfara, Kano, Kaduna, Niger, Kogi, Jigawa, and Katuna states, as well as Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. Two-day forum is expected to draw a workable and efficient roadmap for smooth transition and retention of especially female students throughout their prescribed period of studies. In Kano, Amin Umar, NTA News. State government has handed over the defunct State College of Education, Kiadalo, to the federal government with an appeal that the school be renamed after Tayo Akbata, a one-time commissioner for education in Old Midwest State. Elizabeth Moko has the report. There have been issues surrounding the defunct College of Education, Kiadalo, leading to the final closure of the school in 2018. Governor Gordon Abasaki has exploited the window of opportunity provided by the federal government's approval to establish four regular colleges of education and two technical colleges of education in the country to formally resuscitate the school. Governor Abasaki is thankful to the federal government, but wants the federal government to give much greater support to the technical components of the college. We have come to realize that if we are going to train a new generation of young people who will produce what they need, who will be self-sufficient in Nigeria, then it must start from the educational system. Minister of Education Maladamu Adamu, represented, says the school will take off in September, October this year. But he appeals to the governor to support the institution with security road infrastructure and other facilities that will facilitate the development of the school. I wish to request from a two state government to support this college in the area of scholarships and capital projects, knowing too well it is a special college that involves machineries and the rest of them. The two partners believe that the establishment of the federal college we promote self-reliance and boost technical and vocational education training in Benin. Elizabeth Amako, NC News. 36 selected cooks from the 18 local government areas of Ondo State are part of the nationwide documentation and training of cooks on the National Homegrown School Feeding Program. The training is at the instance of the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and social development in conjunction with under state government. Olushola Komalafe reports. Mrs. Makonchola Ayeni from Akoku Southwest local government area of Ondo State is a cook with 35 years working experience. She is one of the 36 participants selected from the 18 local government areas of the state for training as instructors to monitor and coordinate the hygienic condition of food prepared for poopies in government schools. As you go back home and uh, uh, input the knowledge that I've gained in the seminar. That is how to keep the environment where we are cooking the, uh, the children's food neat and uh, how to keep their food neat. The guest trainer adds on the need for clean environment and the cooks balanced diet among other necessity for cooks to put in place when preparing food for the pupils. So the objective is to train them on how to prepare a very healthy meal for the children. If we keep complaining, keep correcting you and you refuse to change, we'll just block your accounts. Ensure that the cooks have the requisite knowledge of what it takes for them to give uh, uh, quality and healthy meals. Other participants like Makonjola Ayeni were charged to educate other cooks in their local government areas on proper hygiene in Akure, Ulushola Komalafe, and Tien News. And in sports, Cynthia Ogun is our guide on sports update.
We begin with football. The Nigeria Under-17 female national team, Flamingos, completed a sweep in the third-round FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup qualifiers against Egypt following Saturday's 2-0 win at the Petro Sports Stadium in Cairo. They now await the outcome of the second-leg contest between South Africa and Ethiopia to know their next opponent in the fourth round. Three games in the Nigeria Professional Football League and PFL March Day 26 fixtures were decided on Saturday with all three encounters ending in home victories with a total of seven goals scored. The biggest win of the day saw Aimba bounce back from their last defeat to trounce Gombe United 3-0 in Aba. While in Uyo, a lone goal was enough for Dakada to deny Plateau United a share of the spoils. In the English Premier League, the tango continues between Liverpool and Manchester City as Jurgen Klopp's men beat a resilient Newcastle United side 1-0 to momentarily sit top of the Premier League table. However, title rivals Manchester City remain a thick wall to bring down as they reclaimed top position after thumping Leeds United 4-0 at Elland Road. Other results, Norwich City were relegated from the Premier League after suffering a 2-0 defeat to Aston Villa as results conspired against the Canaries with Burnley winning 2-1 at Watford. Meanwhile, Real Madrid are once more the champions of Spain as they marched to a record 35th La Liga title, sealing it with a comfortable 4-0 win over Espanyol on Saturday with four games to spare. Over to Athletics, the LSU Invitational in Baton Rouge saw 20-year-old Nigerian sprinter Favo Ashi win the men's 100 meters in a wind-assisted timing of 9.79, winning comfortably from Damarcus Fleming. While Favor Ophili won the women's 100 meters in a PB of 10.93 to become the fastest African teenager in history and move to fifth on the senior African all-time list. With sports update, Cynthia Ogun, NCA News. Sports update concludes Panorama Today. It reached you from the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA Benin. Remember to stand with the NTA against rape and rapists. I am Ubehi Utubar Prasai. Thank you for watching.